Hey guys, this is John from Size, and today we have an unbox, overview and install of a Deepcool product. Some of you guys might have just caught the competition we had with Deepcool, which was epic. Hopefully we'll be partnering up again. Anyway, this is the Lucifer CPU cooler. And you've got a little Game Master on badge there. And the design is half of the logo. Has the tagline, Depower the Heat in Silence. The product description is on this side. Again, Gamer Storm logo, Lucifer, which is the product name. It says, Devour the heat and silence. The Lucifer CPU cooler is designed to cool processors in a fanless mode to create a totally silent system. Meanwhile, it is capable of dealing with higher processors with a TDP of up to 130. Um, this is with the help of good airflow inside a case, of course. Uh, it's a six copper heat pipe design. And they're firmly stacked into aluminium fins to conduct the heat quickly. Massive heat sink. The Lucifer has a massive heat sink with a specially designed fins so as to provide enough heat dissipation area to cool the CPU as fast as possible. Convex copper base. The copper base has a mirrored finish with a convex shape. Touch the core of the heat source. The gapless touch accelerates the heat transfer from the base of the heat sink, which ensures high cooling performance. The bundle fan, we have one 14, or that's the typo, it should be 140 mils PWM fan, is included for better cooling performance in overcotton conditions. It also can be mounted as a case fan for better airflow, that'll be if you, you're you going to go um, in the silent mode, which seems a little bit odd to be honest, if you're going for a silent system, but... Uh, suppose you could go that route on the reverse. Um, I'm just going to pick out the key things, and that is socket compatibility for Intel. We've got 2011, 1366, 1156, 1155, uh, 1150 obviously. Uh, and we've still got LGA 775, which is slowly starting to disappear from a lot of the new coolers. Um, so it's good for legacy. So obviously you've got the compatible Intel CPUs there. Uh, for AMD, we are good for FM2, FM1, AM3+, AM3, AM2+, and AM2. Um, overall dimensions of this product is 140 by 136 by 168. So the 168 is the critical one. This is going to be, uh, if we're looking into your system from the side panel, this is how much it's going to extrude. Uh, so you do want to plan ahead with that. Make sure you will be able to get your side panel on. Um, I'm not really going to worry about these. I will pop up something here and you can read them if you want to do so. So what we'll do is actually have a look inside. We've got this cool handle on top. And it pops out just here. We'll have a bit of a look inside. It's the first time I've seen the product, I uh, don't know what to expect about how it's packed, so what's in it. And first thing we got is this little black box here. I'm just going to get everything out and then we'll have a look through. And then a larger black box which will be the heatsink. Fill a smaller box inside. So we'll, we'll take a look at the accessory kits first. So you just notice it's got these little cutouts and they're good for removing it from the package. I do approve of those. So what we've got in the first box is a lot. So we'll just work our way through them. Obviously, we've got the install guide. Um, which is a fold out document. I'm going to run you through the install, so don't worry about that. We've got all sorts of different brackets and adapters. This one specifically is for LGA 775. Um, it's only for that. And then we've got all the different brackets for AMD and the backlits. Got some thermal paste in there and some brackets for the fans. Um, as always, the LGA 2011 solution always has some additional 
sort of extenders or brackets. But um, on this video, it's a LG1150 install. So I can't do anything for the AMD guys, unfortunately. Um, somewhere down the line, we'll maybe explore on that. So um, I'll bring these back into shop before the install so that you can all see them in a bit more detail. But for now, just want to see what's in the other box. And it is the included fan. We've just got some uh, tape over the silver part of the centre. This just keeps that good during shipping. So it's a 140mm fan with a sort of a rounded edge design. Um, the fan has a bit of a sort of a soft rubber feel to it in general. Cable is sleeved from the base and blacked out. Something I am a fan of. Bada boom, shh. And that sleeving continues all the way. And you can even see here, everything's blacked out. Um, this is just something I'm a little bit picky about with other fans. Um, to me, I, I don't see the point why brands sleeve. And then you get to the base connector and you can see all the red, yellow connectors. And again, generally these, these are left in the red and yellow, which I absolutely detest. Um, on the rear of the fan, we've also got the Gamer Storm logo again. So if you do use it uh, as a case fan, you're going to have to use your own screws. What we'll do is we'll look at the actual heatsink now. So again, I'm not entirely sure how this opens as of yet. Um, I'm just looking for a way into the product. Okay, so it actually lifts off to reveal a smaller box. And then we've got the heatsink inside. We'll just get that out now. And there's nothing else inside. So it's it's pre-wrapped, which is good. And we'll just get that out of the bag. So this is the heatsink. So we're just gonna look at the top first. You can see on either side are the one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes per side. You've got a sort of embossed Gamer Storm logo there and this sort of diamond pattern around the top. Putting that in this way. You can see all the fins and how the pipes come down and all meet to what is claimed to be a concaved base. Obviously you've got this we will remove it and examine it. And there was a claim of a mirror finish, and it absolutely is. That's faultless. That's pretty cool. I'm just going to put that back on for now to avoid any scratching. So it has a bit of an asymmetrical design on the different sides. You can just see these cutouts here, 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 and here. That's going to be where you can fit the fan, obviously. You'll be able to choose different directions, whatever suits. Um, so we'll get to that. So that is the heatsink. There's no obvious things I need to mention or point out. I'm particularly just looking at the heat pipe design and thinking ahead about memory compatibility just to see if they've got one side different to the other. And that's what I'm getting at here, as you can see. The pipes work off to the to the left side on a curve, whereas here you don't particularly have anything. I'm assuming this is a compatibility factor for your RAM to sit under this side, rather than if you mounted it that way, you're going to be hitting clearance issues. But of course, we'll come to that on the install. So as I said, I would bring in all the components, and we'll briefly skim all of those. So we've got all the bits and pieces laid out. Obviously these are the fan connectors. There was actually four in total, which means if you do want to pick up a secondary fan, you've already got the brackets. This is a socket 775 only piece. Uh, this is going to be what we're working with, the Intel set and the back plate. Uh, these two particular mounts are the AMD. And, you know, between the AMD and Intel, there isn't a great deal of difference, but we will just put those out the way. So we've got the back plate and the 
different holes and areas are identified to let you know where you're working. Um, I'm just bringing the cam, you can see. Just let you know inside there it's engraved in just to keep your right and then you can refer to the chart. So it's a, a very sort of generic backplate. You've got three separate areas for Intel. Um, one for 775, one for the 1155, 1156 and 1150, which is what we're going to use. And the last one is 2011, 2011, sorry, and 1366. The first thing we need to do is to fit these bolts and these rubber washers. We need to prepare all four corners of the back plate. So something to keep in mind is this area will notice has like a cellophane over. This is the sort of insulated side that is going to make contact with the motherboard. So when you're fitting these rubbers, you don't want to go that way and cover them. You want it actually that way with the cutout so that your bolt fits through. So center hole is the hole we need. And if I just push those through, you can see I'm going for the center hole. Um, and one of the good things about this particular back plate is but it's not just a solid cutout where it slides up and down. I have seen that on other brands. I do like that once it's in place. That's it. It's going nowhere. So I'll just bring it over to this way. You can see the cap just slides on. And that's it. And just repeat the process on all four corners. And that is the back plate prepared. And we did it again. So that's it. It is now ready to go. As I said, it's it's a really nice touch that those can't slide around. I've seen it on other back plates and it's a real nuisance. So that, as I said, it's going to come under the board. What I'll do is set up the test rig and we'll get that next bit done. Okay, so... As with all back plates installed, there's no escaping the fact that when you fit them and you flip the board, they tend to fall. You know, there's nothing you can really do to avoid that. A couple of things to mention. If you notice on this part of the board, you've got a single bolt here and two above in triangle pattern. Now that is mirrored on the back plate. You'll notice here, here and here. So that is the orientation you need to go for. It won't go that way or it will and it won't sit correctly so you will have to line those up back plate drops through just put a finger or a thumb or something to hold that into place as you turn it over um, the threads will drop down once you sit the board flat there's nothing really you can do about that next we take our rubber washers and we sit those over the mountain arms and there's a couple of key areas to take note of. Again the mountain arms have got three different points depending on your socket type and we're working in the middle hole for socket 1150, 1156 and 1155. Um, you can get this the wrong way around and actually end up setting these two threads too far apart so do take note. And this is the sort of pattern you want to be looking for. You want the curve to be going away from the CPU socket to, to the left and in this case the curve is going away. You just want to sit them down. You more than likely have the issue with the threads disappearing. What I suggest you do is to just to take your, your nuts and set them just to finger tightness enough to grip on. And if you need to just lift up the board and put your fingers under. That's it. If you're determined enough it will grip on. Just go ahead and do these to finger tightness. Go now. So as I pointed out earlier, this particular piece, I'm a bit late in saying it, however, is socket 775 legacy install. This would sit between the back plate and the motherboard. You do have to use that if you are a socket 775 user. And finally, just want to come back to the heat sink and talk about the asymmetrical design. Uh, particular this area is not just a design so sort of you know it's not there for looks it's actually um, key to when you come to mount but 
In particular, the heat pipe area, how it comes off to the left, again, that isn't, you know, by accident. It's to do with memory clearance. So this needs to be on the left-hand side facing the I.O. ports. Now, I will be honest, this heatsink has never caused a true real issue yet with um, any of that CPU coolers, but I'm always wary that it might. Final point to mention that may cause some confusion as these are sort of preset and they can actually move back and forward. And you need to sort of get this into place and preset these before you fit it. So I just want to push them all the way out and extend them fully in our case and you'll see that's exactly where we're going to be fitting there. So yes this is a dummy install that comes up in the comments all the time. You, can, you would have your CPU and thermal paste ready at this point. You can take the cooler, making sure that the heat sinks, um, the heat pipes rather, are on the left side. Again, take a note of, of this arm. I'm putting that through. And then it's just a case of bringing it down. I will spin the cam, uh, the board, sorry, just so you guys can see. That will come down into place. I'm just going to do it briefly to finger tightness. I haven't tightened everything up at this point because I want to mention this cutout. As you can see, it's actually key to tightening up because you're going to have to get a screwdriver right down into there and tighten up. Now it is going to be somewhat fiddly and I would suggest that you would focus on tightening up this point first. So what I'm going to do is just tighten everything up on the back plate and see how it goes. As always, do not try and over tighten these. They will go a little bit further than they need to. And the effect and problem you will cause is a buckling effect on your motherboard. Which this motherboard has got because of continued sort of heavy usage. So you just want to go to the point where they feel comfortable. Don't try and overdo it, or you're going to run into problems. As I said, I'm going to try and get this one done and out of the way first. I just want to try and eye it into place. And it, it, it is a little bit tricky, to be perfectly honest. Certainly not impossible, but a little bit tricky, a couple of turns on the screwdriver and it will catch the threads and start to go into place and then you will just repeat the process on this side again these are pressure guided screws so you've got the the opposite issue here you can't go too far unless you really really you know push too hard and we'll get to a point where they don't want to turn anymore and that is the stopping point do not feel you need to go that extra turn. The springs are designed to stop you going too far, but if you're very heavy handed, you might just overdo it and cause irreversible damage to the CPU. That's it, it's now into place. I'm just coming back to that point when I mentioned way back at the start, is these two areas for the fan. In my case, I've identified there's already quite a lot of room for memory, but I am skeptical about how much area that's going to eat up once the, the fan is installed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll just have a bit of a look at how much clearance we've got underneath. At this point it's it's really etting into the first two dim slots. I'll go ahead and get the brackets. And these are very sort of generic, you just want to clip them in and then into the CPU hole. And the hole that you need to mount in is the second one, that's going to be in contact, not the first. These tend to be quite fiddly. So just persevere with them, they will jump out. Now, something I like to try and do is, in this instance, you can see the cables there. Um, 
I would actually turn the fan so that the cable's coming out the bottom and then I like the rotor route and under. That just means when you're putting the clips on you're not fighting with the cable as well. <laughs> it is proving somewhat difficult. Not challenging but difficult. So we're just going to bring that into place and we're going to bring them around and find the point where the arms will click. And you can't get this wrong. If you feel like you're needing to really extend and pull these, you, you more than likely put the clip on the front instead of the back part. So that's now into place and if I just bring it up you can sort of get a feel of how much space we're looking at. Um, we don't have the luxury of being able to move the fan up in this case and um, that's the sort of room that we're left with underneath. I've got a selection of memory modules. The first module I always like to try and test is my faithful old Mushkin because if you just look up they're only a few millimeters above standard. Well, I'm curious to see whether this is going to fit or not. Um, ideally you want to remove the fan, put the memory in and then try. So I'm just sort of lining and sizing things up and it's going to be extremely close. Okay, so um, I've actually not given much thought when I said that you can't move the fan up. Of course you can actually move the fan up. Apologise for that. Um, you can just see there, we're about 2-3 millimetres above the module. And the base of the fan is just under the bottom portion of the heatsink. That means we, we could move up a little bit. Um, you can see the clips aren't sitting as well as they should. But, you, you know, this workaround would be quite sturdy in an ideal world you know you want this to be down so that the base of this fan clip is below um, it's, it, you know it isn't ideal but you could run it this way so that means you know testing the Kingston HyperX Beast is absolutely pointless we know it isn't going to fit and I'm going to have to move the fan up a, a significant amount um, you know, clearance varies so much from board to board, but in this particular instance, if you wanted to use low profile, you still need to move up a few millimeters. Um, I could probably get that down, but I'd rather not be pushing. And, you know, in the case of, this is dim slot three here. And we are literally just a few mils. So, you know, DDR slot 1 and 2 are out of the question with the Lucifer course. There is a workaround. It's staring more right in the face, and it is this area here. The additional fan mount. Um, my concern here is it's, it's going to be so close to the, the rear of your case, but we will explore it to see what uh, what the options would be. Of course we're going to have to reverse the mount. So I'm just going to take those off and reverse them. My preferred method would have the air uh, pulling. Otherwise you're going to have a, a negative pressure effect in the case if you, if you go any other way and on um, this motherboard even though we've got that quite obstructive heat sink there that fan will sit in there no issues at all so that would be your workaround you would have this at the rear um, you, you definitely wouldn't get a, a, a rear fan in there it would be unnecessary so just Get those into place. And as you can see, we've got 100% compatibility now with RAM. So it really is just going to be a case of seeing what works for you. If you've got lower RAM and the fits under, I, I would prefer to go with that and have my fan pushing and then perhaps a secondary fan at the back. And then you've got a push-pull effect. 
this is the alternative of course um, you know it will work that's going to sum up to today's video I, I would like to thank deep cool for sending this out if you want to see the results um, and have a bit of a comparison to the other heat sinks that we've looked at in the past find that link in the description or an annotation wherever it ends up in this video so yep yeah, thanks for watching i hope it's been of some use to, to some of you guys hit that like button if you've enjoyed it hit the sub button we'll, we're trying to increase the uh the amount of competitions and things that we run so it's always good to be subbed so you don't miss that catch you in the next one